Cool. There's a post there. Yeah, it's your best friend now. Yeah, there you go. That's how you make friends. Isn't it? Yeah. It's replaced you. Oh. All right, rhythmic biker. Hi. Uh, how we doing? I'm Uncle Red. Woo. Yeah. You know who I am. Um, yeah. We're gonna do a joint vlog today. Huzzah. Um, mainly because Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and all that. Cool. Yeah. I wish I could be more motivational about this, but you know, Christmas. Who likes Christmas? It's the most wonderful time of the year. Really. So the they song say. Says it. So they say. <laughs> Last time I listened to people talking about what's good and what's not, they said Star Wars is great. I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, it's the best way I can piss him off. Just say Star Wars is bad. All right. We have some bad weather. Apparently, um, there are a few patches of blue in the sky. I think. Now I'm looking over towards Aylesbury, there might be some rain coming, but we'll do what we can with the time that we have. It's been a bloody interesting year. It's been a, a wonderful one for a lot of reasons, mainly because we found a lovely, lovely dealership that allows us to ride their bikes. Mm. Without a any, lot of time. Yeah, without any quips, any worries or anything like that, which is um, a stark contrast to what I've experienced before in the past, trying to get a couple of test rides and you get the sales pitch before you ride the bike. It's like, okay, but I don't know if I like the bike before I ride it now, do I? So, um, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's been very Just nice because to I'm have. there doesn't mean I want to buy it. Precisely, yeah. And then um, um, <laughs> you got a call, didn't you? from some lovely people. Oh, I did, yes. So uh, the lovely people at the Triumph dealership uh, where we rode the... Uh, I can't remember what you took out when I took out the uh, the Bonneville. So I took out the um, the Tiger 900 Pro, I think you, it was. You did, yes. You took out the Tiger, the new Tiger. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, the lovely people at that dealership give me a, a call yesterday. I unfortunately missed the call. Um, however, maybe not so unfortunate once I heard the voicemail. Maybe for the best. Uh, and um, a very polite gentleman uh, just telling me that the demo Bonneville uh, that I test rode is now up for sale uh, and that apparently I'm interested in it. Um, so that couldn't it? be further from the truth, could it really? <laughs> Do you want it? Do you want some? Do I want it? Yeah. Hmm. Let me hmm. think about that. I can't imagine anything <laughs> in your video that will tell us that you don't want it. So what no, you... no I, I think my video was just, uh, I think it was just pure 14, 15 minutes of me saying how great it was and how much I love it. Oh yeah, uh, there's no sarcasm there, is there? <laughs> no, none, none at all. The sprint's oh, dear, going in dear. for part X tomorrow. <laughs> That's it. Um, and for, for you know any of those wondering as well, I did make a video on the um, the Tiger but unfortunately I won't be releasing that because when I was actually on it I was doing everything as normal like I do babbling on about absolutely anything I can lovely bike but the console the entire time kept on yelling at me that the rear indicators were not working which is exactly what you want when you only notice that 15 minutes into the ride so it is a massive shame because it was my second venture into adventure bikes ah, 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 ah. and I did like it a lot and I enjoyed the ride it was lovely smooth um, I keep saying smooth in a lot of those videos that's, that's one thing I need to change um, use different <laughs> words red but yeah a lovely time it's just unfortunately it, it didn't work out because of the, the console screaming at me um, about the warnings that sort of stuff and I just thought yeah I can't willingly release a video if um, something's not right with the bike basically well if something's blatantly not right with the bike put it that way yeah, I think that's only fair. Um, I think if you ever get into doing these reviews, I think you have to give a fair review of the whole thing. The bike has to be in full working order, otherwise you're always going to have a... Y your mindset's going to be altered because of it. Like of you course. said, it. Y you know, you, you can ride the bike fully capably and you, you, know, you, you were riding it safely, but it's always in your mind that something isn't quite right, so... Yeah, and there are some very eagle-eyed viewers out there as well. I say eagle-eyed, it wasn't yes. bloody hard to notice. But, um, yeah, when, when you test ride a bike, you're more focused on what you're doing on the bike as opposed to what the dash is trying to tell you. Um, unless, unless you know, you, you are that sort of person, in which case, kudos. Yep. I guess I should have checked the bike over before I took it out. Anyway, um, what else did we test ride? <laughs> um, <laughs> So yeah, if, if we was to knock them off, um, I don't even remember what we test rode first. So we had the, the Harley experience day where we took out the, 
Ooh, what did we take out first? I had the fat bob. You had the fat bob and, and I had the street glide, was it? Yes. Yes. And the you street bloody glide. loved that glide, didn't you? You bloody loved I, it. Oh, I I'll tell you what, I would glide right into the dealership and buy one of those. Um, That's it. Yeah, they are they are beautiful, beautiful machines. Uh, the word I you said you always use the word smooth. I I'm a bit I always use the word planted. Um, I need to really address that in a, in some of my future content. But yeah. um, it was it was absolutely planted. I, I just loved how big, mean it was. But you could still absolutely throw it round the corners as if it was a elite sport bike. Yeah, it just kept asking for more. It, it it really did. There was no there was no limit to it. I was trying my best to find it, but. No, the bike has, uh, it, I mean, it's way, way above my skill level and I'd love to see someone who is really confident and uh, really experienced on one of those. Oh, really you should show have seen the other tail of the Dragon, mate. I was in there, I was like, wee, sprint around wee. there, wee. <laughs> you, <laughs> you could pay me to ride that better, um, No, you it was were, a lovely you were doing bike. That, doing that with, yeah, <laughs> doing that with your right hand and a Bud Light in your left. That's it. Um, <laughs> yeah, it was a lovely bike and genuinely, I... I I, f I really can't sing praises enough for that. Um, Harley have done an amazing job on that. Yeah. Which is uh, oh, fully. quite the compliment, actually. But Definitely. still. Definitely. Uh, especially for me, I, I don't think it's any secret anymore that at some point I will own a cruiser. Um, it, it's bound to happen. We've it, changed yeah, it's, him, it's, lads. We've changed we, him. We've He's going to get a cruiser. You, <laughs> converted me to the dark side. One of us. One of us. One of us. No, it's uh, it's definitely going to happen, and um, when you're when when I'm now test riding, especially the Harleys, who obviously are famous for it, you do have to think right. Well, wh what am I going to go for? And that that is now a that's a very strong contender. Uh, it's very strong. It would take some beating. A quick bit of advice I can give you before you invest: make sure um, you read the manual and you have a lot of tools because uh, yes. if there's any work that needs to be done on that bike it's definitely worth doing it yourself it's a, if it's the smaller stuff this is it yeah that's the problem isn't it once you uh harleys have obviously especially this this year's uh range and this year's uh all their models they've come a long way um and we've spoken in previous videos about harley potentially changing their their image um and the bikes as well the bikes have come a long way and they're now you know from a broader range of people but it's still a Harley Davidson. It still comes with that expectation. It still comes with that reputation, and it also still comes with expensive repair bills if something goes wrong. So that, that it does, and the yes, the um, the world suffering over the last couple of years hasn't been very good at that as well because we've noticed uh, myself especially having to take Jelly Bean for services. The um, mm. labour charge has skyrocketed. So if there's oh, any small God. tasks definitely get the tools out and learn how to do some uh, quick repairs yourself. So, um, skipping the next Harley one, we have to bring it back a little bit to the uh, the Zero electric motorcycles which we rode. Because they yes, were, yes, we, um, we understand there's a lot of, um, you know, electric motorcycles. They're not real bikes, ah, but they're still fine, sure, whatever. Um, we had a lot of fun on them. And that's- we, we definitely did. Yeah, that's sort of where I, come to the conclusion of um, I'd say they're really nice for a commuter um, mm -hmm. what you got what you got what you got what you got really nice bike um, they're really nice for commuters but at the same time it is definitely not a bike I would consider riding out on the weekend for a pop around if I was to for example come out here with you and uh, yeah. like make a video or something like that it's definitely something where it's just like where do I need to go to point A point B go there come back job done yeah, it's a it's a bike for convenience, um, not for yeah, not for everything else. Which is surprising considering in both of our videos we said how fun the bike was to ride, and we were making it out as if it was uh, to be a weekend toy. But really, when you actually get down to the nitty gritty and the uh, you know the, the the specifications, you can't argue that the bike really would just be for commuting effectively. Yeah. And don't get us wrong, it is a very fun bike to take out. It has a lot of power uh, being electric. The um, the lack of clutching gears was quite something to get used to. But it just had it just had everything on tap. You wanna go faster, just 
you know, give it a blip and you're suddenly going up 10, 20 miles an hour. So from the zero, which was, I think, the best way we can sum it up is fun, if a bit weird. To the, yeah, uh, fun, fun with practicality. Yeah, that's it. Um, to the rather expensive, but much more luxurious Harley Livewire. Um, and I, I remember saying in my video at the time, like, I, I genuinely feel like I could ride that bike one-handed for the most part. Yeah. And I worry. Oh, definitely. Because we've seen, at least I've seen enough people on the electric scooters with their mobile phone in their hand because, you know, people are just glued to their gadgets these days. I worry that yeah. because of how easy that live wire is and how, um, how responsive it is to the user that we're going to start yeah. seeing a lot more riders with... Yeah crap in their hands which shouldn't belong there this this is it i i, I do think it the problem is like we've said it we could ride that bike one-handed um similar to the zero i thought it was a lot of fun but i do think it is a bike that encourages bad habits yeah. um it it definitely doesn't keep you uh keep you riding like you would on your test let's put yeah. it that way <clears throat> no chance and the thing is, with having a clutch and gears, this is kind of why I don't like the idea of automatic bikes as well. Um, I want control over the mechanics of the bike. I want to decide when I want to change gear and when I don't. And yeah. um, the problem is, when you have that taken away from you, you notice it very quickly. And there's almost like, um, there's part of the experience missing. It's the same as, like for me mechanically, it's the same as a lot of people with the audio receptiveness. You jump onto an electric bike and there's almost no sound there. You just get that little whirring from the electric motor as it um, gives you the, the grunt to pull away. But it's, um, like I say, it's, it's a weird experience, but that live wire, although it is ridiculously expensive, hopefully as the future continues to uh, um, shove electricity in our face, we'll see some improvements and we'll see some um, we'll see some advances in technology and as unfortunate as it is it is going to be the future unless we find some sort of um, sustainable fuel that we can burn and still keep these lovely sounds as we like them because <laughs> uh, yes. I, I hate the idea of the majority of traffic being on the road which is just silent. I can't stand the idea of like, it, it's bad enough no. now with the Priuses, you know? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I have a hate the relationship with those things, but um, <laughs> yeah, electric cars are more dominant on the roads now, or well, they're becoming more dominant, more numerous. I, I think as well, because um, I definitely, I mean, with the cars especially, probably even more so than the bike, because as a pedestrian, as a child, playing on your local street you're probably more likely to be hit by a car than you are a motorbike yeah um it's because the bike is going to be looking I, at what I, they're doing yeah <laughs> yeah exactly the, the bike is not going to be on their mobile phone um yeah i, I think they, these these priuses these teslas um all of them i think they all need to be making some noise um not ridiculous like not nothing like a skyline or anything like that it doesn't have to be roaring yeah um it just has to be it just has to be noise common noise from a, that you'd expect from a car, from yeah. A, yeah, a car to make. I mean, it'd be a bit weird if a car overtakes you at 50 miles an hour and all it's doing is just screaming, oh yeah! <laughs> so, prove me wrong, internet, prove me wrong. I've seen prove some me memes wrong. and oh boy, I'm looking forward to it. Um, so, from the electric bikes that we've rode, then on to the next one, uh, we took out the Pan Americas. Oh, we did, we did, we did, we did. The lovely, lovely adventure bikes. And again, like I, this, from my perspective, I've always looked at adventure bikes and just thought they're too high. I don't like them. There's all this kit on them. Do you need it? Are you ever going to take that thing off road? So on and so forth. And you know, some adventure bikes are really designed to be taken off road. Some are not. I don't know if I would take the Pan America off the road simply because of its size. However, yeah, as a road bike, that was magnificent. Definitely. And it's Definitely. one thing. Um, so I'll just quickly butt in with this. It's one thing as a cruiser rider, and comfort is always king with me, to jump onto an adventure bike of that sort of size, stature, and just just be in absolute heaven. My ass was just completely comfortable. The riding position was fantastic, and the adaptive suspension as well, which raises you up as you uh, ride and slow down it sits you back down towards the floor again. I love that little feature. 
So yeah, yeah. props to Harley. They from a cruiser brand. They've really done well with not only the electric but also on their adventure bike as well. Big old surprise there. Oh, without a doubt. And it, to be honest. When it comes to the Pan America, I don't really have a lot to say, um, simply because... Was it not good enough I, I think... No, 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 completely <laughs> the opposite. Um, I, I honestly, I went into it with a really... I went into it with a very negative uh, bias. I thought, it's a Harley Adventure bike, it's not going to be great, it's going to be their attempt. It's going to be the, the first attempt at maybe a failed project. I thought, this will be a bike that maybe lasts two years and then will be discontinued, but... It was it was an incredible experience. It was, uh, and this is you know I've I've rode other adventure bikes. I've rode uh, multiple GSs, which are widely considered to be the best adventure bike by many. And honestly, I had just as much fun, if not more, uh, from that Pan America. That engine, oh, I'm never going to get over it. No. To have that in in a bike of that size and stature is just incredible. It doesn't need it, but it, I tell you what, it's a lot of fun with it. So, so 150 horsepower, brake horsepower? 150 brake horsepower, Which absolutely is phenomenal. substantial, I can see that dog's eye up the bike, so... <laughs> Easy there, fighter. Um, yeah, don't you, don't you come. Speaking of that engine as well, so... We then come on to the Sportster S. Which was uh, more around the 120 horsepower, wasn't it? Uh, 121, yes. Yeah, he's got all the numbers figured out, he has. I think it's 121. This is where someone quotes me wrong. <laughs> yeah, that's it. It's an angry commenter. It's like, oh, you got the stats of this bike wrong. Ha, ha, yeah. ha, ha, ha. Ah, uh, Rufnick doesn't know what he's talking about. Ooh, yeah. ooh. Don't talk about Harleys, you twat. <laughs> you know, um, <laughs> blimey. Um, yes, we had, um, I won't say a great time on the sports dresses. Um, hmm. No. <laughs> mm. <laughs> As, no, um, not at all. Yeah. As, as the video, I think, has been released already, when you guys see this. Um, I remember pulling up by the side of you and just asking you flat out, like, would you take this bike out on a country jaunt or something like that? And you just looked at me and I, I could almost see the disappointment through your visor with yeah. the with the, uh, uh, the sun yeah. visor down. Just like, you just looked at me and said, no. So, wow. No. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, I, I don't need to think about it. Yeah, that's not to say... Um, too much negativity about the bike because it is very re uh, rewarding as you throw it out the corners and you really accelerate, mm. you give it some the, the bike excels in just making you brick yourself, the acceleration is fantastic the only problem is, and it's the main problem like I say, comfort is king I can't justify taking it out for a short ride because it's uncomfortable I can't take it out for a long ride because it's uncomfortable and also because the fuel range on it isn't going to be sufficient enough. That tank is small, I would say, for a bike of that size and the engine is very yeah. thirsty. And um, yeah. as a bike that's something where you're going to want to completely smash the throttle around some, some yeah. good bits. I, I, I don't think that bike's designed for people who want to have like um, a leisurely cruise. No, um, no, prove no. Prove me wrong by it's all not means. Your... It's not your traditional Harley. That's it. Um, but you know, they've, they've done a good job on it. It's just, I think if they had an extra couple of inches on the suspension front and back, that could be a much more softer ride. Yeah. And that could definitely, like I don't want to have to deflate the tires, A, because that's dangerous, and B, you know, for the sake of saving yeah. my back. I, we, we can't justify taking that bike out again. Um, no. Even even if, um, I might eat my words here, even if Harley approached us and said, hey, do you want to take these sports dresses around Tenerife for a week? All expenses paid. Oh. I might just decline. <laughs> you know, yeah, I'd, yeah, I'd love course. a holiday for a week in Tenerife on a, on a bike, but the sports dress, mm, pro prove to me that yeah, those this... roads are silky smooth. Uh, and there's mm. not a single bump in sight, and maybe, but yeah, that, that was uh, not... Not an enjoyable ride. Um, no, no. A good experience. Yeah, a good experience. Uh, I'll quickly throw in there, Harley Davidson, you do have our Instagram, uh, so <laughs> if that ever is an offer. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> uh, um, you know how to, you know how to, to contact us. It's time to sell out everyone, yay! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh dear. Um, yeah, I don't have a lot to add. I, I think it is very important that we I think both me and Red are of the agreement that it's it's not a bad motorcycle. 
by any stretch. It's a, it is a, a well be a well built bike. It is a very unique Harley. Um, I mentioned in my video it, it will appeal uh, to a lot of people, and and it could. It does have the potential to get a lot of people who would have never considered a Harley uh, to to buy a Harley to get on a Harley, mm. which is fantastic for the brand, uh, which which we want to see. But in terms of my overall feelings and uh, yeah, conclusion thoughts on it, it just wasn't worth the hype. It wasn't. Uh, I've read so many reviews about this bike saying how incredible it is, and yeah, the engine is phenomenal, the cornering is great. Uh, we, I've mentioned to Red many times, and he uh, he overheard me and Jay having a conversation about the height um, of, yeah. of some riders, uh, myself included. It, it, the bike is not designed for for that. So if you are, I would say if you're over six foot, don't bother. Um, you just won't be comfortable. You'll be regretting it and uh, you'll wish you'll, you brought a, a street glide or something. <laughs> yeah. I say that it could do with an extra bit of um, comfort in the suspension. I'm thinking like you need a, a much shorter um, Pan America, but a much taller yeah. Sportster S. Also, yeah. the rain's <laughs> coming. Yeah, I, I, I have started to feel a few little drops. That's it. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll stop up here, take a short break, see what happens with the weather. There we go. Ain't that something lovely? Beautiful bit of scenery. That's why we ride. That's why. Beautiful bed. All right. So after we test rode a bunch of Harleys, we then decided we'll go and test ride another Harley or two. Um, so along with the Sports Duress ride, we also switched for a Street Glide. I keep saying the wrong glide, but no, it was the I Sport was Glide. Saying, God, I even, oh, no, yeah, you did it, you did it I there, you said the wrong so one, sure. and, then, and then you sounded so confident. Yeah, <laughs> bloody hell, my, my brain. All right, so we took out the Sport Glide. The Sport Glide is what we took out. The Sport Glide, everyone, the Sport Glide was great. It wasn't a Street Glide, it was the Sport Glide. <laughs> Hopefully, if I say street glide, not realise. Uh, I need you to tell me, and uh, okay. I will feel like it, an it was funny. Twat. It was funny because when you just did it there, then you then went on your rant about how I always say street glide. Did it? I was like, should I tell him? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait for it. He'll realise in a moment. Yeah. He'll, um, he'll catch on. That's it. Right. So the sport glide, fantastic bike. Um, I would I would explain. Um, in a very quick terms that it is a stripped back street glide however it does have some rather unique um, changes I, I believe the frame is different which doesn't really feel like it but after you know so many years of being off a street glide and missing the opportunity to test ride the street glide it was nice to take out the sport glide the sport glide nice and pokey where it matters the the controls are the thing. I mean, you rode the newer Street Glide versus the newer Sport Glide. So, what are your thoughts? Difference between the two? Because I've got like that so, two and a half year gap. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So for me, um, the Street Glide was an excellent bike, and I, you know, it's no secret I absolutely loved it. Um, it was, and I'm going to say the word again. It was very planted, um, but it didn't make me want to. It was a very sensible bike. It didn't make me want to hoon it about. No chance. I. Um, you know, I, I wanted to ride that bike and I wanted to ride it. I wanted to cruise. I really wanted to cruise, take in the scenery and just enjoy being on the street glide. Yeah. The sport glide was a totally different story. That was, you know, I could only describe it as I felt like I was in Sons of Anarchy. Um, <laughs> I, I, I honestly, oh, no. I honestly, I, I felt like such a, such a badass. I really did because it, it's a lot lighter obviously without all the uh, all the storage but it is just so much fun and uh, when you when you can open up that engine when you really get run of it it's a fantastic bike it really is so we can talk about these bikes but obviously if you are in a position to take any of these things out for yourself uh, by all means do so they are a lot of fun obviously mind out for some dealerships because they will give you the whole hard sell thing before you've even jumped on the bike uh, and that's what's really put me off doing it in the first place. I've had a few bad experiences. Nothing too much, it's just they clearly want you to buy the bike without any regard to whether you like it or not. Which is understandable, but at the same time, 
could you not? Um, so onwards from there, now um, we both had the opportunity to take out something rather special and I kind of shot myself in the foot with this because Rhythmic here got to ride the beautiful Rocket Free, and he's also got all these lovely camera angles of me um, getting the footage of him sneaking up on me and going past and such, which is great. I didn't get that footage of me on the bike because I'm a bit silly. So I, I forgot, or in our hurry to get out, because it was getting dark at that point, I, uh, I didn't put a camera on Rhythmic's bike to get those same camera shots of me. And then it got really dark and the traffic was horrible. It was just a really miserable ride. The bike performed really well in heavy traffic in Watford, but I said to the guys when we got back eventually, um, I need to take this bike out for a second time, which is the video which you have or are going to see very soon, if I haven't already uh, released it. Oh, excited. So yeah, all things considered, the, the Rocket Free was an absolute monster of a motorcycle but in a lot of regards Triumph have done an amazing job of making that bike like we're talking a really heavy really bulky muscle bike muscle cruiser stonks of torque like just can pull for days can absolutely rip your hands off the handlebars like it did for my video um, this mad lad behind me put it in sport mode because why not uh, I didn't get a chance to <laughs> because I forgot whoops but we, we, we both had a whale of a time on that motorcycle. We both agree it's outstanding, but for the size and the damn shape of the thing, everything that is ridiculous number-wise about it, it is so bloody easy to ride. Yep. <laughs> I, I'm exactly the same. I, I said in uh, the, one of the best bits I think I said in my video was, this is a, an absolute masterclass, a, a beautiful piece of engineering first and a motorcycle second. Um, how they've made it all work together, I, I, I don't know. I, I really appreciate it. I, I'm, I, I, I feel. I said it again. I said it in the video. I feel honoured um, to have been able to ride that bike. I feel honoured to have been given the chance to take it out and see if it really was uh, was what people said it was, or if it was just a gimmick bike. Yeah. Because that's what we feared. We had a bit of worries that it could be just a gimmick bike. You know, like. And I'm not meaning to brand shame here, but uh, a bit like a, a lot of Nortons. I find a lot of Nortons to just be gimmicks. Um, and then when you actually put them on the track or put them on the road, they're never as good as what they what they proclaim to be. But the, the Rocket 3 just just wasn't just wasn't like that at all. The only the only thing I could struggle to conclude for the Rocket 3 was who bought who buys it. Um, I, I I don't think I would commute on it. I probably would tour on it, but I, I just, I don't know, I think for touring there's there's always going to be an argument mm. for a, another bike. Alright, and our final talking point, I do believe, was our lovely trip to the Peak District, which is an absolute marvel of British scenery. I thoroughly, I thoroughly encourage anyone in the UK, if you are itching to go out somewhere, like go for a ride, um, for a week's holiday or even if you're trying to like plan a holiday abroad don't bother just go to the Peak District it's, it's stunning out there absolutely stunning yeah ah oh, gorgeous gorgeous let's, let's not underplay it no it's um it's incredible isn't it we see all these uh motorcycle holidays advertised all around the world Canada Czech Republic etc etc Germany and don't get me wrong these places are beautiful but uh definitely see what's in your own your own backyard like the peak uh, the peak district not too far away uh, depending on obviously where you live but for us it was a nice it was a nice duration it was a nice journey up there once we got gotten past the uh, the m1 uh, past Northampton um, oh that was fun wasn't it Bloody hell. oh that was that was horror it, it, it wasn't great because uh, we obviously had the, the panniers on That's it, it. Was, it was a Bank nightmare. holiday weekend, then one traffic. Oh yeah, it's gonna take us. Oh, what was it? More than yeah. an hour to get. What should have been 15 minutes up the road. That yeah, was fun. yeah, more than an hour to get from Newport Pagnell past Northampton. Yeah, an absolute, an absolute joke. Terrible. Just, uh, just to clarify, just to clarify, me and Red never said that we were intelligent. We just said it's a good idea to go up to the Peak District. <laughs> yeah. How you get there yeah, is entirely up to yourself, but um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Avoid the bank holiday, definitely definitely avoid the bank holiday if you're going to go up there I, I don't know if you're the same but i would advise staying up there for a bit 
Um, we were there for a total of uh, three days, was it? Yeah, three days. Was it three, uh, three days, yeah. And uh, we stayed in a lovely caravan um, with a lovely owner who uh, really looked after us. Yeah, she was outstanding. And well, she that, was outstanding. She just left us to, to do what we wanted to do. And, you know, oh, yeah. as long as you're not an absolute arsehole, that's the best kind of um, person you want to be renting. Um, oh, a, definitely. a short holiday person stay thing. words words um, <laughs> English <laughs> yeah you want to be renting from someone who just leaves you alone which is great it's, it's a shame that we didn't meet her in person but at the same time here's the instructions here's what you need go for it yeah um, and, it, and, it, and it was a lovely caravan the heaters were a phenomenal you'd never expect it from a from a little tiny that's it, uh, yeah. sort of camper home you'd think it would be a bit chilly but no it was it was beautiful everyone that turned up for the Vulcan S meet once again thank you you were phenomenal um, everyone just rode really well I think we had one older chap who rode quite slowly but aside from that the pack didn't really get split up it was just a simple simple ride out lots of challenging corners and a beautiful bit of scenery to go with it and yeah like I say we, we've never had a bad experience with a Vulcan S meet up but simply no. because of where the Peak District is and what you've got around you, it's absolutely stunning, absolutely phenomenal ride out that Exactly. Was. And uh, I, I, so much I, honestly, so, as an app, go for it. Uh, so much so Oops. that we want to go back out there and do it all over again, hopefully with more bikes this time. But um, regardless, that was absolutely stunning. And once again, thank you for everyone who showed up and made that such a, a bloody great little ride out. Exactly. No, as, as an outsider, yeah, I've, I've said it in multiple videos with the Vulcan S group. Now, yeah, just uh, thank you for including me. Thank you for keeping me involved, uh, despite owning a uh, a rival a rival manufactured bike, I suppose. And uh, and yeah, in terms of that Peak District ride, that was that was glorious. The route was phenomenal. Uh, so well done to you, Red, for planning that. It was uh, absolutely stonking. Some lovely bends, thank you uh, very much. which I enjoyed even even with a pillion. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, absolutely great, and yeah, everyone rode really respectively, and uh, yeah, they're just a just a nice bunch of lads, aren't they? That's it, yeah. Everyone's lads and out lasses. just to nice, have a nice lovely group. ride, a lovely time, have a sip of tea and coffee on the way as well. It's lovely places we stopped at, and um, overall, yeah. just a phenomenal experience and uh, a lovely, lovely trip to. Uh, to, to sort of like finish the year off really that was that was sort of our last hurrah for summer yeah because the uh the weather the weather hasn't been great since no and speaking of that the fucking dealership's closed <laughs> ah of course i don't know what their opening hours were on sunday but i thought they would still be open yeah oh well that's a shame never mind yeah, it still made a good fin uh, a good finishing point like we needed somewhere to aim to that's it so um yeah Unfortunately, our destination is closed, but that's fine because we're still here. We're still, ah, we're still riding. Um, I'm, I'm completely lost as to what to say. Really, I'm just gonna go around in circles. <laughs> are, we, are we just gonna? Is this like a square off? Is it? <laughs> that's it. Yeah. Just way, um, so yeah, we've had a fantastic ride out. Unfortunately, um, our destination is closed. But oh well, never mind. We can uh, try and find a cafe nearby or something, see if there's a place we can get a spot of tea, um, as uh, as British people do. Ah ha ha ha. And uh, yeah, I think uh, we'll just finish off the vid uh, video. Park up here. Lovely, sorted. I'm just going to scoot around the front end of the bike and say thank you very much for watching. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. I do hope it's a good one. Thank you very much for your support over the year and years. Uh, we both do really appreciate it. And hopefully, many more videos to come. Hopefully, much more to see. Here's to 2022. Uh, <laughs> be optimistic, won't you, Ed? Won't you? <laughs> but yeah, thanks again, everyone. And uh, yeah, we'll see you in the next video. Don't. <laughs> I have to, because that's when it fades out to black. Don't. <laughs>